I was recently back in Southern California and got a tour of the transmitter side of KLAA AM830 in Orange County. This transmitter site is out in the pasture lands of Chino, and it was here in this building on stilts that I met up with my friend Mike Boyle, the chief engineer of the station. And now you may wonder, why the stilts on the building? Well, the site is located on a floodplain, and as a requirement, the building had to be built on stilts. Well, I'm here with Mike Boyle from KLAA, AM830 in Orange County, right? Still in Orange County, right? Yes. Okay, still in Orange County. Um, and you were telling me it's the biggest station in Orange County. Yes, as far as uh, coverage and, and power as well. It, well, there aren't any other, many other stations in Orange County no. itself. Yeah, we're the biggest commercial station. I think yeah. There's one other commercial station, but... Yeah, yeah, there's not much in Orange County. No. They all moved really. to LA and abandoned Orange County. Yes, yes. <laughs> so anyways, we're at the transmitter site. So walk us around, give us the tour. Okay. Well, Tell us about it. Let's show you the, um, our, our main transmitter, which is our 50,000 watt NX50. We got this a few years ago and it uh, was basically cut, cut our energy bills in half and we got increased reliability. Um, it has uh, a you know, touch screen, so if we needed to look at the parameters, like our, our charts here for the reflected power, audio levels, tells us our power. Um, it has a, a feature, it's modulated dependent carrier level, so that it, it only, it, you can see how the level changes with the modulation, and when it's, Right now, when they have audio, you see that it's running at you know 30 kilowatts or so. And then when it gets, if there's silence, then you'll see it ramp up to 50, 50 kW. Um, it's got different settings for our night night pattern as far as the power. Um, this is our re remote control rack. Uh, this is our satellite receiver, and for it to work with our audio chain, which is this is our audio switcher, we need to resample the sample rate for the you know digital signal coming into here gets resampled, goes into our Titus switcher, and then we can switch between a satellite. We have an IP uh, feed. We have actually we have three of them. We got this is our primary IP codec, our backup, and our third our Comrex that we use to get. In an emergency situation, we have uh, our old remote control system that we're still using. We're going to be switching over to this. This is our new IP-based Burke system, the, the touch. Um, it's got some of the functions still wired to it. Uh, we've wired, we still got to finish it. Uh, these are our distribution amps that we use to get the audio going to various, you know, uh, to the panel here, to uh, some of the meters in the in here. I'll show you the. Here's our software that we can remote into. Obviously, we're we can read the power and obviously the ratio and phase of all the antennas, the three antennas that we have. We can we can go remotely and switch it here manually or automatically. Switch if it hears silence. UPS units for the computers. We got you know two computers. We have a lot of redundancy, so we have our primary remote control computer, our backup computer, uh, UPS in a rack there. Here is our antenna monitor. So we'll use this to calibrate. If the night pattern is, if these levels, if these readings are off our sheet, then we can use use this to calibrate it with uh, these our phaser. This is our uh, phaser cabinet. Uh, we have to make sure the common point is always in a specific range. You always want to, you're looking for the null to keep it, you know, the most minimal reflected power. Uh, we use these controls, these cranks, to adjust the phase and ratio. And uh, we keep a note of where it was in the past. So we always note it, we make a note, because sometimes if you get something so far out of range, you have to. Re you can go back to the, what originally the settings was. Because a lot of times with rain and, and the soil, the moisture in the soil will affect the pattern of uh, our antenna system at night. 
This is our backup transmitter. This is our, our DX, Harris DX50 that we use as the backup. It was our primary for many years um, until we got the NX50. And uh, we, we test it like twice, twice a year. Uh, we have to do it late at night because if we try to test it during the day, we get uh, additional charges on our power bill. <laughs> so, but we were really lucky enough to have this transmitter. It's very reliable. So all these little modules in here, it's hard to tell that they're in here, but these, these little power modules that build up the power to 50,000 watts, and you can swap them out. I'm, obviously, I think you have to power down the, the transmitter to do it first. Um, but I have some in the back I could show you what they look like. But each of these banks here have, I've never had to replace them. I have seen, in fact, that we had to replace the capacitors, which are, I can show you the size of the capacitors that this takes, which is quite, uh, <laughs> quite different than your typical personal electronic device. But um, yeah, like I said, it's a very reliable transmitter. We have, uh, this is our dummy load. So anytime we need to fire anything up, uh, test, if we want to test the transmitter, backup transmitter on a dummy load, either of the transmitters, we can fire it up and, you know, test it without going over the air. So that, that's very handy. And so that box up there is for, Tower 1 will, can become our, our primary antenna during the day. So that was put in so we have a backup. So if something happens to Tower 2, which is our primary day, everyday um, antenna, we can switch to that as our, our backup. So would that become uh, non-directional or? Yeah, it's our non-directional. Okay. So if something happened where, we, we use that a lot of times. So if we have, if we have to change our beacon lights or bulbs on, on the tower, we'll switch to Tower 1 to broadcast from during the day so that tower, tower climbers can safely climb Tower 2 without it being energized. And we'll lower the power so that they don't get, um, so it's safe, safe for them to climb. We do have power outages out here. We do have a generator. And uh, let me show you the, the trans transformer, or transfer switch. So this guy is what will automatically switch over if we lose shore power. Right now we're curling utility power. When we're on the emergency power, this will light up. This will tell you it's running. But in here is where the, the heavy duty power is. So we have our, each transmitter has a disconnect here. So when we're doing maintenance, we have to power down the transmitter. We have to, uh, you know, turn off the power and then we have a lockout so no one can actually turn it back on. Um, this, yeah, it's our little storage area. These are our, our spare relays that we have for the, for the intended units, intended tuning units out there, the contactors. Uh, the, yeah, these little silver clips. So, I think they're plated with silver, or they're. I think they're fully silver. I think so, but yeah. So these guys, I think these are some used ones. But this is you can see what they they do eventually. After this is the wear and tear, obviously that happens. So we'll we'll go out there and replace. It's it's amazing that this tiny little piece, you know, part is what can knock you off the air. Yeah, that is just amazing. So, yeah, we have a lot of spare parts here. This is our old UPS system we just recently replaced. All our old ISDN T1 lines is now it's in a, it's so sad <laughs> because, you know. And so here's some of our spare components for the new transmitter. Here are some of the capacitors that go into the DX50. You can see the size of them. They're like. The size of a soda can. Yeah, really big. It's amazing that this is how the advancement of technology compared to the size of each transmitter you know, the, it obviously it's gotten smaller, but how that one is more efficient than the bigger one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's fascinating to me. We also have um, a inductor coil here. We're going to have to replace one of our inductors because of what happened was is the, these, one of these rings here got burnt, in one of the coils. And so, and the reason why it got burnt was when we were making adjustments, it was, there was too much power going into the phaser cabinet. So, um, that's going to get replaced eventually. It's very difficult to replace in the phaser, replace it. It's really, you have to be a contortionist to get into where you need to get to. Not only that, but the way that's installed, you have um, uh, pins that you have to punch out. Yeah. And so, that one's the one that's in the phaser, right? Inside the phaser cabinet. Uh, originally, this was where we had our generator when they first moved this transmitter site. You can see where the, they mounted it there. 
You have a um, nice little uh, roll-up door over there to get yeah. stuff in and out. Yeah, that was that was rolled up in the area. Time we had to power up. The, I think on the wall here was a you know they had a vent, but that was also just for maintenance and getting things in and out of the building. My plan for this room is to I want to get a mixer. I want to make it an emergency studio in case okay. of a situation that we can just we can broadcast from here if we have to. Yeah. So that's one of my goals in this area. Hi, I'm going to take a moment here and recognize the sponsor of today's video, LinkUp Communications. When your content has to get to your audience. You can count on their content distribution using XDS and other industry-leading platforms. LinkUp has provided distribution solutions with the highest degree of reliability for over three decades. They bring old-school network experience to your products. And while LinkUp was built on satellite delivery, they're not strangers to the emerging world of internet delivery. The XDS platform can utilize both satellite and terrestrial IP delivery to provide that extra layer of assurance that your content will get to where you need it. And that's why the largest radio news organization and many up and coming talk shows are choosing to distribute their programs through LinkUp. If you're wanting more information about their services or just who are they, visit their website at linkupcommunications.com. And now, Back to the video. Yeah, so under here, we have these coils and they're wrapped up a specific way. Uh, those are specific turns and that's for our, our measurement system for our antenna. Because oh, okay. uh, those add, they add the inductance to the energy that's coming in to give us the proper readings. Yeah, yeah you can. And of course we have a lot of birds. This is kind of like a Bird sanctuary? Bird sanctuary of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was out here with Paul, we had that going on. We also had a huge fire where they're literally dropping water and you can see the planes dropping water. So you got gunfire, you got fire drops, and we're <laughs> fixing this thing. It was one of the most surreal experiences, <laughs> you know? So I was just like, wow. Yeah, we'll come over, this. be careful of this. This is our... <laughs> oh, here's your... Yeah, we need, I need to get some more. Nice. But yeah, it's always fun at middle of the night when you have to get over here to get into here. Um, um, yeah, so we just replaced this, this fence enclosure. <laughs> so it was, it was so bad that if you unlock the padlock that, um, Oh, uh, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. I, oh, that's so cool. Oh, yeah, I was explaining this to someone. Mm -hmm. Come on, start talking. Oh, yeah. start oh, talk sorry. No, not you, them. Start talking. Oh, it's, it's pretty well grounded. That's, I still think it's one of the coolest things about AM. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's done, and it's gone. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, oh I think wow. It was this. Yeah, I don't. I think this is. Yeah, I guess this is. This is RF. Nice. Pausing at. Let me see. Let me back on. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Had to check the uh, grounding on the fence. This has been a brand new grounding. <laughs> 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 So we'll be really careful. We're not going to go in this room. I just wanted to do, we'll peek in all that. So we're not going to obviously go in just. So yeah, you can see the transmission line come under there and then it goes up to that copper pipe and that strap. That's where the, it gets, it enters the building onto the, the network here uh, of coils and capacitors. There's a jumper there. One, one morning, Sunday morning, we had a rodent um, climb in here, you know, get, get in the building somehow and uh, short out the whole system. And it literally welded, we had to replace that jumper and uh, it's back on the air, so. So there's those contactors. Yes. And those will change which, which of the capacitors and coils are in line for day and night. Yes. Um, and then for directional, non-directional. Yep. 
as well as there's one there for if we want to go to the auxiliary tower. So there's another contactor up there that we have to switch over. It's it's a whole there's several yeah. steps, yeah, that you have to go and you do have to do it in a certain order to uh, get you back on the air as quick as possible. So if if I could if I could if I had a choice, I I think I would rather maintain transmitter sites because I just it's it's peaceful. And you know for an AM site, it's not you know AM sites. You know they always say it's easier to get to an AM site because it's just not going to go up a mountain. But this is kind of a unique. This yeah, is a little challenging it's, it's, a little it's bit. It's out there. It's out in the middle of. I've had it where I didn't. Um, I think we had con no. I had, we had keys, so I had to come in the middle of the night because we're just going we're working on one of the problems up here on the transmitter, and. Uh, Middle of the night, completely dark. I get to the second gate, okay? And Farmer Dave, who made, made his property, he's got his sprinklers going on and the rainbirds. So I'm frantically trying to get my <laughs> my keys and like get this padlock open, right? And I got, and I know it's gonna hit me. Like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, dang. <laughs> and I got glasses, so I'm like, this is this isn't working. <laughs> so I think I eventually just hopped, climbed the fence. I ripped my ripped my sweater. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to. At that point, I, I it's such an adrenaline rush when we do have an emergency out here, especially when Paul was, you know, coming out. And I was there so much. I was like, this is awesome. Let's do this. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of these transmitter side tours, please subscribe. I have several more on here, and I have several more to come. So. Until next time, we will see you then. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.